All right, y'all. Sorry I'm a bit late. Just trying to get everything set up. Welcome to the Bonnet Chronicles on a Tuesday. Today is a very special day because it is 022222. And if you were at, up doing anything at 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. and 22 minutes and 22 seconds, you probably felt a bit of luck. I hope you played Lotto or did something fun. I am going to get the word out so that people know I'm live. And um, we're going to jump right into the the topic, which is the idea that there is a culture war. You know, I was watching John Oliver the other night with Axiom, and it just shows you how many people want to deny what's in their face. As we see stuff like the Amman Aubrey trial, as we see how visceral right-wing candidates are being. And one of the points I wanted to start off with tonight is how politics are shaped by this culture war and how there are people who want to try to like downplay the effects of just hard line conservatism and how detrimental it is becoming to our society from their anti-science but i'll go to a doctor i'll let them cut me open for uh elective surgery but i won't let them put antibodies in me to protect myself from a preventable disease to the whole idea that a black body jogging in your neighborhood gives you the right to pursue them with a weapon. We have allowed conservatism way too many concessions to the point where they feel pressed by the thought of, oh, equal rights for people? You mean we should let somebody have a say in their own autometry, no matter what gender they are? Well, we can't have that. How am I supposed to have power and control if I don't tell myself I'm in control of everything? This is what we're up against. And this is what we're going to talk about tonight because it is beyond ridiculous. And I wanted to start with campaigning because I was originally going to talk about the Michigan elections because like many states we have stuff going on in our midterms here we have a squad member who i am hoping we can unseat because she's a waste of a space but so far the people who are trying to unseat her do not excite me one lady i had never heard of ballotpedia didn't even have a picture for her i had to google hunt and found a michigan live video that she put on youtube which was like Okay, I'll watch this later. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm really not feeling this. And then the woman that I was going to prop up because people not only uh, put her name out to me, but I feel like I got a tweet or something from her. I went digging and venting because that's what you should do during the midterm is vet the candidate you want to support. And it's not it for me. And the reason it's not it for me isn't the financial stuff, because I can understand. I am totally team broke ass. I understand getting into a financial crunch, having liens on your house is not an issue for me. We watched them and literally put a broke ass into the White House as president with 45. So that is not the issue. My issue is this person was a clerk in a black area. Where she is, is historically black, almost 99% black, and her job was abysmal in getting the ballots out and getting the ballots counted. And my brain goes, if she couldn't do her job well as a clerk to ensure ballot safety, how can I trust that person to vote the way we need them to vote to make sure that things get passed that help us here in Michigan? I'm sorry, y'all. Being a pragmatic person doesn't mean propping up somebody that just looks like me. I know some of you like to dismiss black voters as just identity politics because when we have black excellence, we do rally around that. But the thing with black pragmatism for the majority of us, not all of us, because I've seen some of the Twitter stuff and I'm going to get to that later. We don't stand people that don't have the receipts or that the receipts lead to a mess. I am not going to uplift 
one mess to replace a current mess that's wasting a representative seat. So no, if you come at me to amplify your run, at least know that I am going to vet what you do. I am going to hunt and pet because I'm not putting my name to anybody problematic. This is the year of cutting that shit off. And I'm sorry, I am pro not all skin folk are your kin folk, even if you share the same DNA. So if I'm not up going to stand for people who are directly related to me, some weird politician that I don't know don't have a chance. And that's what I mean when people talk about the culture war. Some of you lean heavily into your identity. So much so that you could say things. One of the things that bothered me about the John Oliver thing, and I'll, I'll get to that campaign thing in a minute, was this white lady going on about how, well, white people don't want to feel like we're being called racist, you know? It's not fair to assume that about people. And that's why we don't want to use using terms like white privilege. And then the white lady, because apparently only white people can interview white people about this topic, asked her, well, how do you think black men feel when they're racially profiled for how they look? And she, the mental gymnastics this white lady made to justify why it is okay to view black skin as a threat, but we shouldn't get upset about it because it's how we dress and how we look. But we're not supposed to assume that all of you are clan adjacent. Make that make sense. You don't want people to assume the worst about your character, yet you go around assuming the worst about other people's character because you've been spoon-fed that shit for years from Fox News, from your little circle suburb friends, your small town talk about how the big city's just full of the N-words looking to rob each other and harm each other. And then you continue that cycle of ignorance until you pull stuff like chasing down a black FedEx worker and putting bullets in his truck or murdering a black jogger for daring to run in your neighborhood. Or as we're seeing in PA, daring to be that guy on a Saturday that decided that a black jogger wasn't, doesn't belong in your neighborhood. So you grabbed your shotgun and accosted him which you knew wasn't your job because A, you weren't law enforcement. B, people are allowed to jog. There is no law against people jogging in neighborhoods. But white people don't want to admit that on a deep vis visceral level, the some of you have been taught automatically to view black skin as different, view anybody who isn't exactly like you as other, and sometimes it's in benign form where it's just like, oh, they're different, they're exotic. I fetishize you a little bit. And then some of you go to the extreme of you're allowed to exist. I'm not going to say that. I can't own you anymore. But I don't want to live in the same neighborhoods as you. I don't want your kids playing with my kids. I want separate but equal. And that doesn't work. We literally had to fight to integrate schools, and we still have to deal with white flight, regentrification as you kick us out of our neighborhoods because it's cheaper to live there. Anything but actually working and living together with black people, and it's fucking exhausting. And this is what I mean about the culture war. We literally have an actual war going on. Putin has decided to invade the Ukraine. And yeah, I know, oh, it's Biden's fault all of a sudden. Forget that the last guy was literally fucking shoveling trade secrets into Putin's lap while probably jerking off his great Russian daddy. But no, 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 it's just totally this new administration's fault for all the fuckery and all the trying to repair the damage with our allies that 45 did. Nope, let's, let's not think... In the past, we are the microwave brains and we are going to blame this administration for all the bad. And it's fucking ridiculous. And I expect that shit from the far right. I don't even pay attention to the far left anymore because they don't vote. So until they get their numbers up, I ain't got nothing to say to them. But when I see Democrats supposedly running the mill... I voted the right way, then parrot that same bullshit. I don't know how to respond to you anymore, except 
to be disappointed. Being the president is not an easy job. They have to make decisions that some of you don't even think about as you armchair polit politics. And yeah, I know when it's somebody we don't like, we don't give them any grace. I hated Donald Trump. I did not give that man any bit of grace, but he didn't deserve it. The man literally put fucking McDonald's on Lincoln's silverware. He was low class, broke ass, and the New York AG proved that. But there is a difference between knowing somebody is bad for your country, knowing somebody should not have been put in the White House in the first place, and then not giving an administration after one year a chance to continually put out the fires that the last administration put before you leap more demands onto their shoulders and criticize every single action they make as if you were in the hot seat, you would made a better choice. Some of you are not fooling anybody. It's real easy to sit on your device and talk about the Ukraine when you don't know fuck. Some of you couldn't even point where the Ukraine was on the fucking globe. But all of a sudden, you're a policy expert. All of a sudden, you're a tweet at literal chaos agents like Candace Owens, who, if you're a Democrat and you haven't blocked Candace Owens at this point, I'm side-eyeing you because you're suspect. You don't need to see what she has to say. She never has to say anything intelligent. She falls back on her degrees, but I'm guaranteeing you She's not smarter than a fifth grader. So stop retweeting her, stop engaging her, stop making her relevant. Because you know who makes Candace Owens more famous than conservatives? Because most of them don't even know her. It's the people who are supposedly Democrats who get upset about the stupid shit she says and retweets it. Stop doing that. Stop giving her that attention. That bitch already looked thirsty. Stop giving her the water of life of your energy and attention. Seriously. If you don't know her, then you don't need to see her. And every time you see her, she gets you angry because you know she's going to say something ultraly dumb, conservative, and now apparently pro-Putin from the screen cap I've seen going across my timeline. <laughs> because some of you knew I blocked her. So it's like, okay, we just grab a screen cap of her racist gibberish. And yes, black people can be racist. Black people can stand and hold water for white supremacy if they feel adjacent enough and protected enough by it. And for Candace, it's lucrative enough for her. It's not a fun life, though. They have openly disrespected her. 45 openly disrespected her. She don't care. There is no debasement too low for the Candace Owens. So I'm begging you. If you follow me and you have that urge to respond to her or screen cap the stupid shit she says, don't. Her relevance comes from that kind of engagement. That's why I've been trying to tell you about people like Brianna Joy Gray and so many other people. They make their name off engagement, whether it's negative or positive. So if we stop giving them negative attention and just forget about them and focus on what's important, we can keep it moving. And it's funny how these conservatives are leaning into things like pro-Putinism and this whole culture war narrative. A young man earlier, and I'll show the tweet in a little bit, talking about how the Dems may have to give concession and if they want to win whatever culture war, and it's like, nah, we are no longer negotiating with the far right death cult. The people who would rather inject cattle dewormer than to actually do what they have to do to be safe during the pandemic. We are no longer telling them that their cries of CRT, which is just code speak for anything black, is okay when all we are saying is to learn history keeps you from dehumanizing people because dehumanizing people is why we got in trouble in the past in the first place. When you can't look at a fellow human being past their skin color or the shape of their body or what gender they identify as, that's a problem. And too many people want to hold on to being problematic instead of being better people. And we keep talking about giving that attitude concessions, and that is how you lose a culture war. 
You don't concede with people. You these same people wouldn't concede with somebody who's supposedly on the bad side, supposedly a a, a terrorist that you know covers themselves and worships Allah. You just don't care at that point if that person has the right to feel the way they do. But let a conservative decide that they want to wear a certain color sheet and terrorize people of color or jump in their van and chase down the black jogger and then end his life. And all of a sudden, we need to make concessions with that attitude. Make that shit make sense. You can't. And I'm just tired of people trying to twist things, trying to make it seem like there's an acceptable level of bigotry. And you see it all the time with the right. I was looking at this bullshitty uh, ad. And honestly speaking, unlike before, I am definitely not going to put my earbuds in for this. Because honestly speaking, I, I, I don't even understand the levels you have to be to think this is a good campaign. Ad. The governor's but race in Georgia has four establishment stuff, politicians. You, you can watch a little bit of this. And then there's Candace Taylor. And I'm one of ye. I'm filled with the love of Christ because when I'm governor, all abortion will be illegal. I believe in three things. Jesus, guns, and babies. Jesus because he founded America. Guns because we show. need them to protect ourselves from the government. So vote for me. Candace Taylor. It's been a good year for my people, but you know, church too. They love doing that. They, they, I, I, the, the amount of bullshit that the right puts on the Christianity I'm hoping that their version of heaven is real. I told this to Axiom last night, and I mean it. I really hope that their heaven is real. And when they get up there and they stand in line at the pearly gates and they're rejected, that a whole line of black people just go dancing by them to remind them that you don't follow your own religion's doctrines at this point. You're not kind to your neighbors. You don't look after your better man. You don't know how to love. All you do is hate. You're literally running a campaign where you're wearing boxing gloves. Who are you planning to fight? Your job is policy making. That is the problem with politics in general. There are way too many people spreading that bullshit message that we need fighters. No, we need legislators. We need people who can negotiate and work with one another. The things we don't need is shit like this. I don't even understand how those three things go together. Jesus is fine. I don't think anybody will argue against somebody who believes in Jesus. Especially in this country. It seems to be the popular opinion. Jesus is a good guy. Guns. I don't think Jesus would have been on board with that, especially since babies is lower than guns. So Jesus up there, guns in the middle, babies below, because that's what she's running about. Jesus, guns, and babies. So she's the one. People been waiting. No, no, none of that. I don't know what's going on with right wing uh, conservatism. Maybe it's COVID brain. Maybe they have just decided to say, fuck it. Let's throw everything to the wind and be full on fascist. But what I don't get is how many people who call themselves Dems want to talk about concessions. And, and I forgot about it. Let me, let me uh, get rid of that and uh, bring up that tweet that really set this off. The, the main reason why tonight we're going to talk about the culture war because it's always a, a white dude I, I call it broisms because it really is apt at this point to call it broisms it's always a far left fucking trust fund journalist types that that they knew shit like this and good old jordan like a broken clock that nobody wanted wanted to muse about how the Dems needed to concede in order to win the culture war. And let me tell you something about war as a child raised by military men. War is never about winners or losers. War is about conquest. War is about change. War is about taking over an area and turning it into whatever the conquerors want. Conservatives have shown us that under their leadership, we will have sickness, 
We will have death. We will have economic instability. We will have a madman who gives foreign aid to foreign trade secrets to actual dictators while shitting in the face of our, our allies. So, yeah, no, I can't allow any more concessions in a so-called culture war to a party that literally is okay with letting their constituents die from a preventable pandemic than to say, you know what? We're going to stop miseducating you. We're going to stop saying that you don't need to know about the history of this country. We're going to stop feeding you these lies and myths about everything. We're going to allow you to understand that this world is bigger than your backyard. One of the things I, I went back and forth with people today that I don't even understand at this point is the argument that... It's American to only know one language. And that's okay if you don't understand more than one language. And I get that there are some people, due to neurological reasons or just financial reasons, that never had the experience of being able to be bilingual or multilingual. But there are a lot more Americans that are just they just don't want to. And they barely speak English, which in itself, American English especially, is just a hodgepodge of different cultures and languages. But it's funny. Let somebody speak Spanish in front of you. Let somebody speak another language that confuses you and gets you angered. You get mad. One of the things that set me off, the reasons why I tweeted about people in America bragging about only knowing one language is not a flex is the fact that they were marveling at this news reporter overseas that fluently spoke in six different languages. And I was excited because when he started speaking in German, I actually understood him because I've been learning German for the last three years. And even though it's not easy, expect Deutsch. And I tell people all the time, you got to do things at your own pace. But it, it's a human condition to limit the amount of learning you do, especially in the digital age. Back in the day, I can understand living in a small town or living anywhere and having that limit. Like, I got to go to a library on Sunday to get my knowledge. Uh, hopefully, it'll be open. I get everything from a book that I may or may not be able to check out. Years ago, it would have made more sense to limit yourself. And I'm given that convent back then we have no excuse nowadays technology has made knowledge at your fucking fingertips and some of you would rather spend your time arguing on twitter over dumb shit watching cat videos which i don't mind pet videos calm me down instead of learning there is knowledge at your fucking fingertips and you don't take it there are apps that can literally help you every day practice and retain different words in different languages. I don't know. I lost track of how many people hit me up talking about, oh, I wanted to learn and I've, I've been wanting to learn, but I don't know where to start. There's Duolingo. There are plenty of free apps. And there's literal Google Translate. If you don't want to deal, because Duolingo gets annoying, y'all. I'm not even going to lie. I love them. I use them every day. But the constant, oh, you're this part on the leaderboard. Or if I miss a day accidentally because life gets busy, I'm raising a kid and stuff. You get those spam emails. It does get annoying with them notifications. But Google literally has a text-to-speech translator that you can put words in English into the language that you want to speak and literally teach yourself slowly how to say words and phrases in different languages and that repetitiveness is what will help you learn and retain and say things in a different language not only formally but coherently there are ways to teach yourself how to speak how to read and understand but you have to have the desire to do that and sadly, here in America, we have rewarded ignorance so much that it feels like you're being attacked if somebody calls you out on it. And then to make the excuse, well, in Europe, the countries are closer and they have more of a reason, stop it. Stop 
giving America for every point people tried to make about how well in Europe they're all closer together. How many people have immigrated from other countries, brought over cultural dishes, cultural ideas, and everything else, but stripped their language just to be more American? This shit never made sense to me. That you literally have to strip one of the most beautiful aspects of your culture to call yourself American when no, that's not okay or acceptable. When did it become our culture to dumb ourselves down to the point where we don't know how to speak to other human beings? And why is that a, a thing of pride for some people? It's not okay. We have allowed acceptable ignorance for far too long, y'all. And it's seeping through the pores of the right wing. It is why they cry out things like, oh, they want to teach about actual history with the 1619 Project. Oh, the CRT, we can't have that. We can't, and we making up things like, oh, this seven-year-old wrote to me and said that I was ashamed to be a white. No, you're deflecting how you feel. And you know what I say to people who say things like, I'm ashamed of being white when I hear about the stuff my ancestor did? Nobody's asking you to be ashamed of your identity. Even if there's a few that will say, I want to be a black supremacist, that's not really a thing. I know some of you try to twist it, try to deflect, but honestly speaking, most black people just want to exist and want you to view us as fellow human beings which is something, historically speaking, has not been your demographic's strongest point. But instead, we deal with you saying, okay, we'll free you, but we'll make laws making it sure that you know you're different. Oh, we'll change those laws off the books and give you civil rights, but we'll make sure that the police unfairly target you. We can chase you down if you're in our neighborhoods because, oh, that's right, when we said we would integrate schools with you, we decided that we were up and moved to neighborhoods and make sure that real estate agents codify things so that you can't live with us. Or if you do, only one. It's a Highlander rule. And even then, we are going to make sure that that one knows that they're not like us. That is the fucking reality of America for a lot of us, and it's tiring, and it has to stop. I told you, one of the things that bothered me about the campaign two years ago, the campaign trail, was how Meemaw, Richard Attenborough, a black barbershop. Some of you don't even realize how you treat people who look different than you, who culturally identify as different than you. But when I see her go into a black barbershop and ask, what are you doing in there? Um, it's a barbershop. What do you think they're doing in there? But she was copying then Senator Harris, now VP Harris, who went in to talk to black business owners who were there to get their shape up and talk to shit and shoot to shit like most people at barbershops and hairdressers do. Because that's our place to congregate normally and talk. And talk about strategic things that our community needs economics-wise. Because we have a VP now that understands that, yes, We've had to have our own neighborhoods and communities because, like I said, when LBJ passed the Civil Rights Act and when things like Brown versus Ferguson and other border education battles that allow integration happen, white people said, nope, not for us. We're going to up and run to the hills. We're going to create our own communities. We're going to make sundown towns. We are going to show you that no matter how much you try to change the law to make things equal, we will keep it separate. And that is the problem with the whole term cultural war. Because some of us have been victims of this battle far too long. <laughs> I'm sorry, Respect. Welcome to the chat. No, I was going to start at 4 today because I got to get dinner done and everything else afterwards. And kiddo got done early. So I wanted to get the cast started and banged out and then get it uploaded to YouTube when I was done. And there's always a lot to talk about anyway. And the thing that troubled me about the whole idea of giving concessions 
what about giving concessions to the people who are the targets? What about saying, you know what? We've watched how bigotry has rotted the society. We've watched how angry these so-called hateful people are. We have seen how unsustainable it is to continue to allow people to ignorantly only believe in American myths instead of the actual factual truth in our history. We realize that banning books is a bad thing. When are we going to stop talking about giving concessions to the party that pretty much puts their fingers in their ear and their hands over their eyes to any talks of equality? I'm tired of always thinking that the feelings of the people who just, they wear shirts that literally say, fuck my feelings, but I'm supposed to put them first? No, 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 no. My ancestors were beaten and whipped to do that. I am not that person. Y'all will fuck around and find out with my ass. I do not. I am a very civil person, but I am a very angry person as well. And I am about sick and tired of living in a nation that tells me that I have to cater to an open-faced bigot who doesn't want to treat me like a human being, who wants to dehumanize me, call me a racial slur, but say, you know, it's not a big deal because you use that in your hip-hop music. But don't want to afford me the right to live in a decent neighborhood, have my kid have a decent education, be able to travel within my nation without having to worry about a fucking hashtag being my endgame. Because somebody, whether it's a bigot with a badge or just a bigot with an extra easy-to-get-to gun, decides to end me. That is the reality of being black in this country, and I am fucking sick and tired of people with platforms, especially with white skin and platforms, telling us that, you know, it's bad, but since I'm not personally affected by it, you should just give concessions. No, the time for concessions are over. The time for allowing people to continuously dehumanize other people, whether it's based on their skin color, their gender, or whatnot, has to stop. If we are going to come together and tackle the problems in our society, we have to stop saying, well, it's always been this way. Tradition isn't bad when it's stuff like family recipe. Tradition isn't bad and stuff like fun games where friends are playing with each other. Tradition's bad when it's like, I don't like this change. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't understand this, so I'm going to go to fear and hate this. And people just allow it. Because, oh, they've always thought that way, so why change it? I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I watch a lot of YouTube. And welcome to the chat, Alcaniverse. So I watch a lot of these top ten lists. And they were talking about books that should be banned, which I don't like that at all. And I know they would be facetious about it, but it's just books that disturb them. And one of the books was just a, a literal guide about how manifest destiny is a man thing and how women are property and stuff. And I was like, that was how they believed years ago, before people's brains matured. And I know it, we haven't matured all the way, but we've literally shown that you shouldn't judge a person based on their gender identity. But there are people that will fight to and nail to say, nope, female, got to be treat them like they're weaker, got to treat them like they're stupid, they can't lead. And that shit is exhausting. It's exhausting because we miss out on opportunities when we shut somebody down because we don't know. Welcome to the chat, G. Feldman. We miss out on opportunities when we just assume, based on the looks of somebody, that they can't do anything. I say it all the time as a heavy set person. I'm sure that I'm far from the big gamer girl out there, a big gamer guy, but people always assume the worst about our demographics, that we're lazy, that we don't do things, and I'm telling you right now, I can't say that about every gamer, but most of the gamers I know, they run charity events, they work hard, they take care of their families, but we have put up with that fucking ridiculous stereotype about our bodies for the longest time, including the fact that fat people are unhealthy. And I'm telling you, outside anemia, which is something I've struggled with since I was a kid, I don't have any heart problems, and my doctor can attest to that. I don't have any of the conditions that people try to associate with me. People are, oh, you must be diabetic. Nope, because I don't like sugar. I bake for my family, but
but I've always been a salt girl. No surprise there from some of the people who know me. I'm a pretty salty bitch. But, I mean, exactly, respect. HRC is a prime example of that. Here you had somebody who not only had the receipts of serving their country, but you had her put under an unfair, unhart, very harmful, harsh light by people who don't see women as viable leaders, but also want to demonize anybody who dares to say, you know what? Let's all work together finally. Let's stop finding ways to hate on one another and work together because Earth isn't getting any better. Salt really is top tier, Arc Universe. It is my favorite go-to snack. I like salty things over sweet, you know. I just feel that in the grand scheme of things, we have seen that the current status quo is not sustainable. Education is awful. Our economic issues are up and down like a fucking roller coaster. One minute we're up, one minute we're down, and we are in the digital wild west. So now we've got to deal with NFT and Bitcoin and every other thing as people try to figure out their get-rich-quick scheme. So what we need now more than anything is less division, less I don't know you, I don't like you, let's fight, and more let's figure this shit out. We don't have to kumbaya on everything. We don't always have to get along. You don't even have to fucking like me to realize that this shit ain't working. And that working together, that living amongst each other, that not seeing each other as animals or people to fear is a better way of life than this continue, oh, I've got to be the dominant species. How can I prove my worth if I'm not better than other people? That has not worked. If you notice, the people that we prop up as worthy, if you really look at them, are not worth shit and are very problematic. So maybe stop teaching humans to put value in the other humans and teach humans to value themselves. That is how you fucking win a cultural war. By teaching people that there is nothing wrong with having their own culture. That there is nothing wrong with learning more than one language. That there is nothing wrong with seeing other human beings as that. And maybe once we get a respect for each other's lives, we can move on to respect another life. Because I know there are people out there that are just like, well, people don't respect animals at all. And I agree to that. I agree that a lot of people don't respect life in general. But we can't even get the fucking basics of respecting one another down. And yeah, everybody wants to leap on what they think people should do to be better. And it's like, work on yourself. That is my best advice to give to anybody. You know things ain't working right. But what are you doing when you look in the mirror? What are you unpacking? What bag you, did you used to have? Did you used to carry about somebody? Did you realize, I don't want to be that person anymore? That is how you make things better. I know it seems impossibly simplistic, but honestly, I tell people all the time, this was not me 20 years ago. That is why I'm able to confidently say this now. You will never be the same as you were in the past. And if you're not constantly changing and improving and trying to better yourself, what is the point? Staying stagnant only hurts you. Staying stuck in this idea that I have got to be this way because it's all I know. When all you know is hurting you. I ask people who really lean into the whole idea that black people make them nervous. Because I had a woman do this to me. She would come and I would do her taxes of all things. This is the shit that fucks me up. I was smart enough to do her taxes. She loved my apartment in Durham. Thought it was just fabulous how I could be by myself. It was just with my son and take care of the bills and stuff. You know, the veiled racism of... You know, single black mom shouldn't be able to afford her own townhouse bullshit. Even though I was doing her taxes. Sat across from me after I did her taxes. We had tea. We were just shooting the shit and talked about how, yeah, I'm in an all black neighborhood right now. And I don't like it. I want to live in your neighborhood because the neighborhood I was in was a little bit less diverse. You know, my godparents influence, whatever. My family has a lot of problems with anti-racism stuff. 
it's, it's, it's just how it is with black people with money. They seem to think that living amongst white people give us some sort of shield and it's hard to get away from that mentality. But she literally sat in my living room and said, yeah, black men scare me. I don't like black men. And that kiddo came down, grabbed the toy, said hello politely because I raised my kid to be polite. She smiled at him and cuckoo because he was fucking adorable. He's a fucking adorable. I, I mean, honestly speaking, how do you not look at this face and not see adorableness? Fucking adorable. He came down the stairs and she was just, oh, I, I want to eat him up, right? But she forgets that even though my kid's fair skin, he's black. The world is going to see him as a black man. So I reminded her of that, you know? Just like black women do, as side eye as I could. Oh, you just got finished telling me that black men make you nervous, right? She's like, yeah, yeah, why? My son's going to be a black man. All the color drained from her face. She didn't have much color anyway, so it was, it was a funny sight. But it's just one of those things that people say to you because they think that they are allowed to not know any better. They're allowed to have that acceptable level of bigotry. And that's what you got to work against. Because we are literally fighting a culture war, y'all. I'm not going to pretend like we're not. It has been ongoing for years. I've watched friends that I went to high school with who told me we would be BFFs. That 10 years ago, and yeah, I'm dating myself, invited me to the high school 20th reunion, which I cussed them out. Don't remind me that it was that long since high school. What do you do it? But they wanted us to be buddies like we were back in the 90s, only to for me to go not that far into their Facebook feed and have them talking shit about Trayvon Martin and Mike Brown and calling us thugs. One girl literally cried at me because I called her a bigot because she didn't want refugees. That they, they were coming from areas where they were being fucking bombarded over here because she couldn't trust whether or not they would be terrorists. And she couldn't see how I felt that that was just wrong. These are women and children escaping the most terrifying situation and your ass sitting from some fucking place in Staten Island talking about, well, I don't think it would be safe for us. Bitch, what? I watch friends that I used to think I would be friends with in my 50s and 60s turn into virulent racists, and even worse, virulent racist anti-vaxxers literally at protests to not stay safe. It was eye-opening. I'm far from the only black person, especially black Gen X, who have these stories. A people that we used to kick it with, who we used to sometimes be the only black friend in the group with, that we no longer know because they have become very heavily indoctrinated, whether they're indoctrinated by Rush whether they're indoctrinated by Alec, whether they're indoctrinated by Joe Rogan. It is a prevalent issue within our generation right now of people who were very vocal against their boomer parents and, and, and the counterculture movement now leaning into that same conservative lean. The people who used to laugh and mock Alex P. Keaton as kids are now acting worse than him. Make that shit make sense. And I can't call out other generations because I don't care about other generations. I guess that's a Gen X thing. I'm calling out Gen Xers who can in one moment put BLM in your profile, but say the most anti-black bullshit, whether you're black, white, or in between. I'm calling you out tonight because some of you are the reason why we're still in a culture war. You fake the funk of giving a fuck. But your words and your actions prove that you don't. And it's tiring because the only way we are going to get better is if we self-reflect. The only way we are going to get better is if we realize that some of the things we used to hold on to, some of the things we used to tell ourselves to say that we're better people, don't always make us better people. I tell people all the time, some of the worst anti-black things I learned was from inside the house. Whether it was, oh, I can't have my hair in its natural state because it will look unkempt. That was from my own mom. She damn near permed and fried her hair out so badly that it's never going to grow back. And I realized 
by my late 30s, I didn't want that anyway. Yeah, my hair looks cute straight, but it looks just as cute in this natural curly state. So I stopped processing it. Now, I'll dye the fuck out of it because I prefer purple hair. But there's a big difference between putting the natural purple dye and sometimes lightning over literally putting these heavy ass, smelly ass chemicals to change the compound of my hair. But so many black women went through that in the hot comb. I still have burn scars from when I was little. Every fucking Easter, every Sunday when we had to do like a recital or a solo, you were getting your ears fucking burnt to perm your hair and let it lay to the side for what so that we can look a little bit more presentable what was it about black hair that wasn't presentable i'll tell you society attitudes and we have to get away from that it has been so freeing to literally go back to my roots the way i want to do it because that's a big deal within our community too how to go natural the best way to go natural is to do the thing that makes you comfortable. I know that's going to get on some black people's nerves. I don't give a fuck. I'm doing my thing my way. That is how you have to be in life. Just like anything, whether it's how you identify. Because some people want to talk about what makes a woman a woman. What makes a man a man. It's a person. I don't tell a person who they can be. You know you better than anybody else. But the problem is, you go into the world thinking you know yourself and then you let a lot of other people tell you who you can be based on their own insecurities and fear. How is that sustainable? It really isn't. We are in a culture war because we have allowed a society to tell each other that the only way for you to have value is for somebody else who's insecure themselves to tell you that you have value. And that's not working. We've seen that people will tear you down no matter what. I told somebody today because they didn't like the fact that I was dinging people for only knowing one language. He was like, well, how's your German going to help you in China? It'll probably help me just fine. Because FYI, there are people in China that can speak German. I know that some of y'all's world is limited and all you've got going for you is Twitter arguments. But I don't have to give you any more time and attention than the initial tweet. And if I know you're trying to rob me up, bye. Life is just too short for me to waste it being everybody's sparring partner. And I sure as heck isn't going to be anybody's punch bag no more. I dealt with that life. One of the YouTube videos I put up was talking about a, a, a couple that I used to admire One's an artist. I guess they both technically were artists, but I didn't know his work that well. Well, he's under some very serious allegations. And one of the things he said about this situation was, oh, my partner, my ex lied about the situation before I had to get out. And that's why you got to invalidate the fact that I beat them up bad enough to bruise and harm them. And it's like, no. I know I wasn't an easy person to get along with, and this is before Axiom, my per previous relationship. But I was being hurt bad. And I'm not going to get into all the details because it's not easy to even bring up. But when I say that I lied to the very end so that I could get out of there safe, when I looked him in the eye and told him I was coming back with our son, even though I knew at that point I would never see him again if I could help it, that is what you do to survive. That is what you do when you know that going back to them means you will probably end up in a coffin. When you know that they are just going to hurt you and potentially hurt your little one, you will lie to your ex to get out of there. So it really rubbed salt in my wounds to see the third video from this young man trying to put all of his bad acts onto his partner, who now identifies as they them, so I'm doing my best not to misgender them. But I made it clear when I made that video that it is on us sometimes to bend the truth to save our lives. And if you have ever lived that life, if you've ever been in a relationship where you were physically and emotionally being hurt by the person that supposedly loves you. 
when they wanted you to buy into their illusion of your happy relationship when it was anything but. When they isolate you from everybody you know and love and try. And one of the things I don't think my ex understood is me and my family are funny time. We might not always talk to each other. We might not always like each other. But when push comes to shove, if there's trouble, they will come and get you. They will come and help you. That has always been my family thing. And they know that with me. I might not actively reach out to them. But if one of them was in trouble and I could help, I'm going to help. Because that's how we were raised. But my ex really thought he did the deed. He got me alone in some fucking podunk Florida town. I was away from everybody I knew. But I was having my first child. My only child right now. And I knew it wasn't a good situation. So I called my family and we started scheming within the last few weeks of my pregnancy to get me the fuck out of there. And my grandmother made it clear, don't let him know that this isn't temporary let him know that you're just coming up there to get some information about how to take care of the baby and that you'll be back just let them know because they dealt with abusive men too they knew exactly what i was going through and it fucking boggles my mind how anybody thinks that when you're in that situation that you're not gonna lie and do whatever you can to protect yourself in that situation and I remember driving away from him the way I cried in the back of my aunt's car, the way she knew because she had escaped a very volatile situation herself, not even two years previously. The way I slept when we finally got to our house and she realized she did the same thing. She slept on the floor when she escaped my uncle with her kids. That is the fucking reality when you escape domestic violence. So I'm not sorry for putting out a video where you see me snot and cry and relive that horrible feeling because it's the reality for so many of us when we have partners that don't respect us, that try to convince us they love us when they're hurting us. And getting out is the most important thing or getting you out like your partner had to do to you was the most important thing. I'm telling you, one of the things that I really wish we could tackle in this culture war on top of black skin is the dehumanization of women. The way some men and even some women who want, who think it's more manly of them to act in a certain way, to treat their partner like if you show any signs of femininity, you need to be treated as less than. This is a reality for women and I'm sick of it. That's why I feel like so many women don't want to be classified as women anymore. And why so many women that supposedly are very loud with their femininity want to knock our trans sisters. It's not okay. There is nothing to be, I am not ashamed of being female at all. I've never felt ashamed of being a woman. But I am sick of a society that says because of the fact that I can potentially house a child, that somehow makes me different. It doesn't change the fact that I'm smart. It doesn't change the fact that I can lead. And I'm guaranteeing you, if you fight me, I'm going to do everything I fucking can to win that fight. Toughness, it shouldn't be based on gender. Because I'm telling you, I was born short, fat, and black in New York City. I'm a fucking honey badger. I am exactly that New York girl that most people know about. The one that doesn't start the fight but finishes it. They called me Tyson back in the day because of how crazy I was when I had to get to that point. And like I said, I don't start fights. There's no reason for me to start a fight. But if I get into one, I'm, I was told that if I lost a fight, I was going to get fucked up. So that's always in the back of my head, even now in my 40s. So yeah, nah. And even, even that kind of training, you still end up with a partner that tests that. I was in a very volatile relationship before, Greg, and I am lucky for what I have now. I'm lucky that we can joke around with each other, that I've never had to draw a knife on him, which I can't say about my ex. I literally had to draw a knife on him. That is not a fun life to fucking live. That is not the kind of life I want to raise my son around. But that is the kind of life so many of us have come from. 
And I just want it to stop. And culturally speaking, it is fucking abnormal in this day and age to feel out of place based on our gender and our place in our own house. And we need to start having it where people exist and respect one another. People date each other and know each other. People work together because that's what a relationship is. Work. Honestly. Uh, G Feminine, I'm telling you, that is my rule in life. I don't go out there looking for it, but if you bring it to me, I am going to pay you back in, in, in every bit of damage I can. And I like to win. I am a very competitive person in gaming and out. So if I've got to get to that point, yeah, I'm going to finish that fight by any means necessary. And I don't have that many tipping points anymore because I tend to avoid people now. I am very selectively social with my attitude now because of it. But I do have buttons. I'm pretty sure most of you know that my main button is don't fuck with my kid. I will fight the devil himself to protect my baby. That is just my right as a mom. I've threatened people's lives behind kiddo. Because I'm not having it. He was seven years old when he had his first brush with racism. Old man calling him the N-word. And I had to lose my shit. Had a bully put his hands on him. And I was like, I'm not going to threaten the child. I don't have to threaten the child. I threatened his mama in a fucking full room full of parents. That if your kid touches my kid again, I know where you live. I'm going to fuck you up. But every time it happens... After that, he stopped hitting my kid. And matter of fact, I think he stopped hitting other kids too. Because I used to walk that neighborhood anyway. It was on my regular exercise routine. I was trying to get fit. So I knew where she lived. And I made sure to dead stare at her every fucking time after that too. I wanted it to be known. You mess with my child. I am going to go full psycho. No stops. But other than that, I try to be calm. I know that I'm never going to be 100% a better person. I was raised by crazy, and I am a bit crazy. But what I try to do is not treat everybody like they're a sparring opponent. I don't want to fight with everybody, but I will fucking defend myself. I'll defend those who I see are saying, hey, I'm a human too. Don't shit on my humanity just because you don't understand it. Because for me, culture war isn't just about my skin. Culture war is about my trans sisters. It's about my female sisters in general. It's about men who are told, you got to be macho to prove you're a man. You can't be sensitive in any way. No. Stop assigning stupid ass roles to gender. It's ridiculous. You know, it's funny. When in my house, I'm the one that can fix things, take things apart and tinker Axiom knits. I can't knit worth a darn. It makes, and I know how to do certain craft things with my hands, but knitting requires a level of patience that I do not have. But you hear people go, men knit? How? How do men knit? It's a relaxing thing. I watch him sometimes. It's like, wow, he really looks like he's in the zone. He's made me scarves. He's made blankets for kiddo and I. He just knitted a baby blanket for our friend. And then we knitted a pink one and played a prank on kiddo, told him I was pregnant. It was hilarious. He did not take that news well because he's used to being the only child. And FYI, we're not not there yet, y'all. But it was funny. The thing is, gender roles are an archaic way of thinking. And we have to stop leaning so heavy into them. It's a way to disrespect our fellow human beings, and it's got to stop. I'm tired of seeing humans saying that gender's the issue. It's not the gender that's the issue. It's the way we perceive gender. It's the way our society continues to try to thwart ancient ways of viewpoints on the people that make it a problem. And if we stop doing that and let people just be how they are, who they're comfortable with, within reason. You know, I'm not saying let's just go wild and full on viva la everything. Because some people do act stupid and deviant. 
But for the most of us, we just want to exist in our own skin. We want to feel comfortable saying, I'm a black woman, or I'm a white woman, or I'm a this, or I'm a that, without it being a big fucking deal. But we can't get there because too many people want to hold on to that limited seat of power that they think they have by separating themselves from other human beings and only viewing anybody who looks different, worships different, uh, thinks differently as the bad guy, wants to shut out any kind of knowledge that teaches people that you should view this stuff from the past as bad and get away from that. And it's not to make you feel bad as a white person or any non-black person. It is so that you do not repeat the sins of your ancestors and we don't repeat the sins of ours. Honestly speaking, the knowledge of history wasn't there to make anybody feel bad. But if you feel a bit of shame for the stuff that went on in the past, that means you have empathy and you should embrace that. Because you could take that and say, I don't like the way that made me feel. I want to make sure that this never happens again. That should be the natural process. But when you have meatheads like Joe Rogan and Fox propaganda channel telling you, nope, CRT is bad. They want you to feel bad for being white. And it's like, nobody wants you to feel bad for being white. That is not the goal. The goal is for you to understand that your whiteness doesn't make you better than everybody. That your whiteness just means you have a different skin pigment that we're all human beings that need to exist on this earth, work together so that this shit doesn't blow up on us and maybe stop fighting each other over the fucking resources we have and figure out how to just live. I know it's crazy for me to be talking this way, but maybe y'all need a little bit of crazy. It just doesn't make sense to me how we are still in this digital day and age where knowledge is literally a swipe away, still fighting over things like this, still watching countries talking about annexing things like it's fucking 1918. We have to start being smarter because the people that have taken advantage of stupidity, they're getting old. And they're just raising dumber people who think they're smarter than us. And they're really not. I've watched some of the so-called right-wing conservative all-star politicians. The ones who aren't fucking get, going down for child sex trafficking are almost fucking 90 years old. And the younger people, they're not buying this bullshit. If they're not playing militia and shooting up people, they're in fucking methodistic Dazes for some of them. The right isn't doing all right, y'all. I'm sorry. For the few that are, there are a lot more that aren't. And this is who you want to leave this country to instead of making yourself just a little bit of a better person? Come on now. But I'm going to get ready to wrap this up, y'all. It's after five and they get ready to start dinner. I want to thank you all. From now on, the Bonnet Chronicles I am going to shoot for four o'clock. On Tuesdays, I am still going to be at 7 o'clock on Fridays. It will definitely be a full hour on there. I tried to go an hour tonight as well. But um, it is still a school night. And we got cooking dinner. And I've got cookies to bake. So I'm looking forward to that. I do thank you. Like I said, the closer it gets to November, the more you will start seeing me talking about candidates and who's running. I thought I was going to have more on the Michigan um, District 12 run. And then when I started vetting, I was like, oh, no, I ain't putting my name to this. I don't like what I see. And I will put the links in, in the YouTube notes about that. But seriously speaking, this is the time, y'all. Before November gets here, before August gets here, for some of us who have primaries, vet, study, learn who you're backing, and vote. It matters. But I will see y'all next week. Thank you so much for being in the chat, y'all. Love you. See you on Friday.